Today I'm going to be talking about web browsers and the two web browsers I'm going to speak about are Google Chrome on the right hand side and Microsoft Edge on the left hand side. I think for many years Google Chrome has been the undisputed champ for browsers either for mobile or for desktop PCs and I myself I normally just as soon as I install a new operating system whether it be Linux, Windows, I go straight to Google Chrome. I don't even think about using anything else. However, I think recently Microsoft has really stepped their game up and I'm going to be going over a few features as to why I think this is. I've got exactly the same PDF opened on both browsers and again on the left hand side I've got Microsoft Edge and on the right hand side I've got Google Chrome. I do have to preface this by saying even though Microsoft Edge has gotten so much better it is only down to Google why that's happened because Microsoft Edge as of I don't know when this was I think 2021 or 2022 is actually using the code base from the Chromium browser. So Google source code is actually running Microsoft's browser. What makes Microsoft Edge a contender now? If you're like me and you open a lot of PDFs on your computer and you want something to be able to read your PDFs, the reason why I do this, for example, if I'm having the computer read this question, what I will do, I will actually close my eyes and listen to the computer read this, try to make sense of it. I focus a lot better. It gives my eyes some rest. Even if I'm reading, let's say five or 10 questions or a whole page of something, close my eyes, my eyes can rest for a bit and I can have the thing read it to me. Now I'm going to highlight something on here. Let me zoom in some more first. Let me zoom in some more over here. I'm going to highlight something on Microsoft Edge. If I go to right click, there's this thing that says read aloud selection. And what this does, I'm going to test it now. This will actually read whatever I've highlighted on a website, a PDF. It won't do Word documents. It will only do PDFs and web pages. So I'm going to click on that now. Question, what are the key considerations when designing a decoupled architecture? A, use services like Amazon SQS, SNS, and AWS Lambda to decouple components, ensuring that each part can operate independently and scale separately. Right, now this is something I'm working on. This is an exam I'm going to take very soon. So I've got like 100 questions in here. And what... Yes, it's twice the speed or 1.75 times the speed, but this is how I listen to things because it just gets me through a lot of stuff a lot quicker. When I do that, when I highlight something and I right click on Google Chrome, I have none of these options. I do have a read aloud thing here, but I've had to install an extra plugin to get this. Now, I don't know about anyone else, but that feature alone being built into my browser which is probably the thing that most people are going to use to open a PDF if they don't know about other PDF things because it just works by default. So whenever you install Windows 10 or 11 for the very first time, when you try to open a PDF, it opens it in Microsoft Edge. And if that's a feature that's baked in, that's a massive, massive, massive win for someone like me. Now, let me preface this section by saying what is being touted as AI is not AI. AI is artificial intelligence. All these chat gpts and microsoft bing chat and google gemini this is not ai these are large language models that simply can that we can interact with using voice text or images or whatever the case is this is not ai but saying that i'm going to use the word ai here very loosely because it's, i know that's what most people understand this is not a i wouldn't say a game changer here but it's a really nice feature to have for me to actually get to bing chat on my google chrome browser i've got to navigate to the Bing chat website. So the Microsoft Copilot website, right? For me to do that on my normal um, Microsoft Edge, there are a couple ways I can do this. I can simply click on the Bing icon up here and it just pops up straight away. That's very, very handy. There is also, let me enlarge this. There's also a button on here that says ask Copilot. And I'm guessing it will take context from this file. I haven't used it yet to be fair. It, I just saw it, I decided to try it. And it comes up with the same window over here and I can ask it questions I'm guessing related to this document over here. The fact that this is baked directly into the browser without me having to go anywhere else, having to open any other website, kind of a nice feature for someone like me. And again, I'm not saying this is a game changing feature, but it's a very, very nice thing to have, especially in today's world where AI is the next thing. AI is the thing that everyone's talking about. As an extension of what I just spoke about, there is are i guess tabs or um, widgets that you can attach to your browser in microsoft edge google chrome doesn't have this feature as of yet as far as i can tell and what this does if i move my mouse over copilot here it simply pops up with a copilot screen just like it did before if i move my mouse over the google gemini thing nothing happens once i click on it it does pop up with a similar screen now i think this is quite good because again, I don't have to go to a separate web browser. I don't have to open a separate tab. I can be working on something here, like a Word document, and I can be asking questions on the right-hand side here. 
and it does exactly the same thing for ChatGPT. I've got ChatGPT 4.0 here and I've got Google Gemini um, Advanced here. So I'm paying for both of these. It works really, really well. And again, this might not be a feature that everyone wants, but ju just the fact that it pops up right next to the thing I'm working on and I can copy and paste a lot easier and ask questions and get answers and jump back onto my thing, really, really helpful. Just as a quick note, if anyone out there is using Google Chrome and they want to switch over to Microsoft Edge, it is a very, very seamless process. If you go into settings, there's a section that says import from browser, which means that you can import your passwords, your, your um, bookmarks, everything from another browser. The default one is obviously Internet Explorer, but that's not a thing anymore, really. And you can also choose other browsers or so Firefox, Google Chrome. As you can see at the very top of my screens, I've got exactly the same tabs for both my browsers. And that's because I typically use Google Chrome because I have an Android phone as well. I have a Chrome OS laptop. So I have everything synced up nicely on here. However, on my Microsoft Edge browser here, there's an option that says import all of that uh, browser data, passwords, login, bookmarks, import all of that stuff every time I, I, I actually open Microsoft Edge. Quite handy if you wanna use Microsoft Edge on the PC, but Google Chrome on your mobile phone or tablet or so on because every time you log into Microsoft Edge, it will transfer over your history, your passwords, your bookmarks, everything. I'm back to PDFs again, because PDFs are a thing that I really, really like. And I think most people who work in IT have to deal with a lot of PDFs. It's the best way to send documents, in my opinion. On the right again, I have Google Chrome, and I'm gonna enlarge this. There are no edit features. I have a PDF, I can read it, I can rotate the PDF if I really wanted to. I can download, I can print. I have a few options over here nothing crazy however when i open exactly the same pdf in microsoft edge which is here on the left let me enlarge this i have all these things at the top that are so this browser is essentially contextually aware that i have a pdf open obviously that's quite easy enough and because i have a pdf open i can do certain things so not only do I have a really good default PDF editor, which I can use Copilot with that just pops up on the side. Um, I also have something that I can edit. So at the very top here, if you can see my screen, I'll try and zoom in on the video. The very left hand side, we simply have um, the contents page. After that, we have the highlight button. So if I click on that, I'm not going to change the colors or let's just leave it as a default, but you can change the colors. I'm simply going to highlight something on my PDF. So just so you're aware, this is something that is baked in, built into the browser. I've, I haven't installed any extra plugins. This is directly inside the browser. Um, I have a draw button as well. So let me click on that and let me draw some stuff. Why not? Okay, so I want to highlight that question, that question. Oh, this part's really good over here. Again, built into the browser. I don't need an extra PDF thing. Uh, next, we have an eraser. So let's just erase everything that we just did. So quite a good PDF editor. Here we have the text thing, so I can insert text. So this is a test. Oh, spelled that wrong, but that's fine. Um, after that, I can go back and ask Copal. I can even translate in here as well. So all of this is baked into the browser. I don't have to go anywhere else. I know I keep saying that, but this is, this is not mind blowing, but such a good feature. And I don't think Microsoft picks out the right features from its services to let people know about. There's so many times I've seen other people tell me things about Windows. And I'm like, really? I didn't know I could do that. These are some of the reasons why I think Microsoft Edge and all its features is a very good contender to um, Google Chrome only on the desktop. On the mobile, I don't think it's as good. But that's someone who's been using Google Chrome on mobile and desktop for 10 years plus. Thanks for watching. Hopefully that was useful. And let me know if you make the switch to Microsoft Edge.